us when our first guest bought his house, his mother cried. <laughs> Where everyone else saw garbage, graffiti, and empty beer kegs, he saw 4,500 square feet of Victorian potential. Here to share his story, please welcome the author of From Animal House to Our House, A Love Story, DIY preservationist Ron Tanner. Good to have you with us, Ron. Nice to have you here. Thank you. All right, so you spot this house. I did. And it is run down. You call it Animal House. Describe what you saw. Well, when we walked into the house, you know, the boys had disappeared, and they had abandoned the house because they'd been sued the by... The frat boys. The frat boys had abandoned the house. They'd been sued by the city, sued by the neighborhood, and actually the city had cut the power to the house and the water to the house. The boys had stayed in the house for three more weeks, and so when we walked into the house, it was like a neutron bomb had gone off. Wow. The, the boys were gone, but all their stuff was there. All their furniture, all their full refrigerators that had sat there for nearly a year including a, a walk-in closet of turn papers and uh, graffiti on the walls. The floors were ruined. Plumbing was shot, but, but the toilets were full. But didn't a very sharp realtor list it as furnished? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The bank was selling it as is. It was a short sale. They were just trying to get rid of the property, right. and nobody would touch it because the three ceilings were falling in on and on. The, the, mm. it, it was just it, full of garbage. One room was to the ceiling with garbage. And um, I walked in the house, and I said what pretty much everybody else said, which, which was, whoa, this is too bad, it's a tragedy. But Jill, who's walking ahead of me, said, this is great, this is a wonderful house. And later she said, Ron, you're never going to find another house like this. And I said, you're right, it's Kingdom So Jill property. was your girlfriend of three months at three that time? Three months at mm -hmm. that time. Yeah, now, now how much of her passion for this influenced your decision? Uh, 99%. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, a lot, I, we both loved old houses, but we knew nothing about fixing up old houses. But the minute she said, Ron, I will help you fix it up, I heard, Ron, let's get married. She, you know, we were just too new to talk about that, but I kept thinking, well, you know, she loves us so much, and if we can make this work, then we could probably get married. My Maybe wife and I can't. My wife and I can't pick up paint color without fighting. I, okay. How yeah. do you manage that? <laughs> well, so, do you, you moved into the house? How did I that moved into the house when it was condemned property because we had abs I had spent all my money on buying the house. Now, I can encourage Jill to move in, but she it took her about two months, and then she took a leap of faith. She moved in, and, and uh, two months later. And we proceeded to work on the house. And we were working on the house like 12, 14 hours a day during the summer. I'm a teacher yeah, were, and I was off. Were you doing all this yourself? Or all, you all my stuff because we had no money. Now, you got a, you got a remodel loan. Yes, so. we did. It was a 203K a HUD-sponsored loan. And that's just to get the house safe. HUD says, make the house safe. You don't have to make it. And how much was that loan for? $60,000. $60,000. And you thought that would last for how I long? thought that would last. I thought that would do all the work. Again, I was totally naive. Yeah. But all that did was it, it, it uh, fixed the plumbing, fixed the roof, and a couple of other things, and then the money was gone. So we were all alone. Okay, so then what do you do from there? Well, what we do from there is I was doing nothing but plastering. Jill was off doing whatever she thought needed to do, she needed to do. Now, here was the problem. Number one, if you want 10 tips we have for staying together when your house is torn apart. Yeah, let's hear Number one, make a plan and then talk it out. We had no plan because I thought the sixty thousand dollars was going to take care of it. But once we got into the house, I said, "We well, have people who are giggling because yes, they know." You would laugh, yes, of yeah. course you would. Uh, so, so um, we had a lot of tension there because every time she was doing something, I looked at her and I said, "I said to myself, you know, she needs to get with the program." But there was no program. We weren't right. talking. Right. She, right. Needs, yeah. she needs to get with the, the program. The program that was in my head. Yeah. Brilliant. And, and so, Eventually, uh, eventually, we figured out how to talk it out, and so we started working that out. But the other thing is, the other uh, tip is that take a break once a week. You know, you don't have to just go full out all the time. So yeah. we started learning how to take a break. Well, let's take a look. We have more picture here. This is this is the library before yes. and after. I'm, yes. assuming, wow. I'm assuming top left is before. Yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> And then the fraternity finally uh, uh, called itself Da for uh, Delta Upsilon. That was mm -hmm. the fraternity. And they had painted stuff like this all over the house. And wow. so, so the bottom picture shows you what we could do with, uh, we would collect vintage material and we would put that together in our own custom library. And that's the kind of stuff we just love to do because it gives us an excuse to go out shopping for all these antiques. Well, th these rooms here. And this is the entry to the house to the left. Is the, it would be the front door. And on our side, looking to, into the house would be the tower bay. And we're looking uh, through that's the beautiful. living room to the back, uh, back uh, to the dining room. And here's the kitchen as we found it to the left. We just uncovered the hearth, and to the right, uh, we've just uh, updated the kitchen a little bit. That was. Did you take the, the old hearth and then make that with we the cooking area? We ex expanded it a little yeah. bit, uh, and um, it, it's a lot of fun. Now, the backyard was infested with rats. Mm. It took us about five years to get rid of those. 
And um, and actually, when I saw the, saw the rat holes, I said to the realtor, you know, these look like gopher holes. We can get rid of gophers. He oh, said, yeah. Ron, those are rats. Oh, and, and, so, and that didn't stop you. No, it didn't. You really loved this woman. Well, I did. I, we yeah. were madly in love. But also, we were a little bit older, so we, we had a little bit more patience. Uh, but also, uh, I was broke. Uh, she was broke. And we couldn't really just leave, you know, on the spur of the moment. Why is it important to you to save an old building like this, well, an old Victorian? There are a lot of reasons. One, one is I just love old buildings, and so does Jill. And, and they're just a lot of fun to live in. But also, they're, they're uh, you know, they're a bit of our cultural heritage. I mean, you know, they, they show us how people used to live. They're, they're really well built. Um, the old houses are the greenest houses because they've already paid for their carbon footprint long, long ago. I mean, you could build a brand new house, the most efficient house possible, and it would take that house 85 years to pay back all the resources and all the energy and whatnot it took to build that house. So an old house is a great investment. Also, they're just really well built. And so how much time did you spend rehabbing this house? Well, it took us over a year just to get the house safe, up to code, which meant, which meant that it was legal to live in the house. And then we, uh, it, probably about uh, uh, three years of really intensive work, a couple more years, we turned the corner on the house, and by that time, uh, the house was, was such that people would walk in and say, well, this is a pretty cool place. But up until that point, up until about year five, people would walk into the house and they'd say, oh, wow, you're working yeah. on this house. Yeah. You, know, you know, that kind of thing. And I had an architect friend who would walk in, he'd take a deep breath, look at the ceiling and go, oh, this is a great space you got here, just a great space. And we said, well, no, it's a great house. And so uh, by about year five, we started turning that corner. And then we were, uh, by year seven, we, uh, this old house magazine expressed an interest in the house. And so they did a feature article on it and they posted that online and it went viral. And we've heard back from the frat boys since that time. Really? Oh, no. Yes. Yes. And what do the frat boys what, say? They want their term papers back? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> they do, yeah. Um, they, you know, they're established. Uh, you know, these were all engineering students. You know, it's from Johns Hopkins University. Mm -hmm. I heard her laugh out there. Mm -hmm. Yes, and and they live like that. They're, they're doing well now. One one said, you know, he, he and his wife just had twins, and another uh, uh, mother uh, of one of the frat boys um, emailed me a couple of weeks ago and said, you know, my son lived on the third floor, and he was as neat as a pen. His room was just a night. And I said, I'm sure he was. And then she said, um, but you know, I was afraid they would burn down down the house. You yeah. Know? I said, yeah, that's probably a good thing. Yeah, so you're still <laughs> living there. We are. It's it's great. We've been there 11 years now. It's almost done. It's, <laughs> <laughs> well, we work in phases. It will, will it ever be done? No, it won't okay. because we love the house and we keep uh, inventing new projects and we keep upgrading. Well, you know what I find uh, with old properties, when you, when you rehab one room, when you refurbish something, it really makes everything else look even worse. Yeah, so so you, it's a constant cycle. Uh, well, it's a fascinating story, and we want folks to know you're going to be tonight at the Dino Colt on uh, right. Northeast 42nd Avenue. Right. And that's tonight at about 7.30, so stop on by. Uh, more pictures, more conversation about the house and why it's important to restore these properties. And you have another event tomorrow. We're going to put that on our website yes, for everybody you. to find at, out. Thank um, you very much. Thank you. Yeah. So thank much. you, sir. Thanks for coming sure. in.